Now the digitalization of science, what some people call e-science, the execution of the scientific method by electronic means, consists in the combination of both of these fundamental acts of science and the digitalization of both of them. So we have the digitalization of empirical work that mainly refers to exploiting the digital big data footprint that allows us to see what has happened in the past, these footprints left behind uh, in the past. And the usage of computer simulations that allow us to explore what could happen in theory in the future and combining both of them to pursue the holy grail of science to figure out why what actually happens. So it's the combination of both. And here you can see some examples about how people start to combine real world data with computer simulations to answer some very interesting questions in a setting of actually virtual reality. Let me give you one real world example about the power of the combination of the analysis of the digital big data footprint with computer simulations. For example, one uh, often cited example of pioneer in the use of these modern techniques was the Obama campaign, the Obama presidential campaign of 2012. What the campaign did is they invested $1 billion into the creation of a group of 40 engineers, so that's $1,000 million, and they contracted these uh, uh, these IT engineers from companies like Twitter, Google, Facebook, Craigslist, they had some stem cell researchers and even uh, some professional poker players. And they created a group called Project Narwhal where they created 16 million unique voter profiles through a process of data fusion. So they use different sources, email sign up, uh, voter registration, volunteering and donation records, also tweets and Facebook postings and TV watching behavior because they tracked 20 million setup boxes. And then they rank 20% of the undecided voter on a persuasion scale between 0 and 10 and then ran 62,000 computer simulations to simulate likely voter behavior during this upcoming round of presidential election. The value of this data pool had many uses. For example, for one, the Obama campaign paid 35% less than the opposing Romney campaign on broadcast commercial because with this data insight they could tailor and have tailor-made commercials sent to specific areas where they knew well this was a message that was much more better received than in others. They could guide volunteers in their phone and door-to-door -door campaigns saying well this is a doorbell you really cannot miss that's a uh, that's a swing voter that we really want to convince. They got email donation requests. They raised about 200 million dollars per month. So they got their money back, their investment back uh, back pretty quickly and they were able to have a tailor-made email donation. You know, if somebody already donated, they wouldn't bother them again. They just had a record of this data. They knew how likely how much these people scored on their persuasion scale, how much could they push them or not, how loyal they were and they were able to maximize their campaign uh, raising efforts. And Actually, they could predict states voting outcome with an accuracy of 0.5%. That means that the Obama campaign, even before the election, was pretty sure if they've won or not. And most impressively, they changed the voting behavior of almost 80% of the targeted undecided voters only through Facebook. Now, how did they do that? So, for example, how you can think about that is if the campaign now knows that you happen to be opposed to abortion. Um, and it happens that Obama in his campaign promises is pro-abortion. They're not going to bother you with this fact because that will put you off. The good thing is that politicians, they usually have a bunch of dozen, 60, 80, 100 campaign promises. So they just pick the cherries and they just show these three campaign promises that you agree with. For example, green energy. And actually they don't only show it to you, they have somebody of your friends who is signed up on the Obama campaign, they press like on the Obama campaign, so the Obama campaign has access to their, to their social media, to their Facebook site. And on your friend's webpage, they then regularly post green energy, green energy. And you look on your friend and say, well, I really trust this friend. And he says, Obama is in favor of, I'm in favor of green energy. I might vote for Obama. Now, actually, the fact that you might not agree with the rest 
of the 97 of the 80 campaign promises. Well, that is kind of like put underneath the table. Uh, so with this, with this tailor-made messaging, people can, well, George Orwell might have called it brain washing. So it's actually, it's, it's a pretty interesting question. Does that still have something to do with democracy or is this manipulation of the public will? Be it or not, big data and computational social science has an important role in nowadays political landscape. Here are two other examples of modern computational social science. For example, what you see here is the simulation of Los Angeles downtown. So real empirical data was used to simulate Los Angeles downtown. And the question was, what would happen in the case of a terrorist attack? How would people flee downtown? That's a theoretical scenario. In theory, what would happen? And now that allows you the combination of empirical data with these theoretical scenarios allow you to study numerical solutions of the behavior, of the mass behavior of people. Here another famous example is from Portland. So Portland spent a hundred person years uh, to write code for $30 million to optimize the light rail infrastructure rollout. $30 million, you might say, in a hundred person years of writing code, that's a lot of code, a lot of money that they spend. But it's not so much if you consider the expense of rolling out an infrastructure and imagine, imagine all the emergent phenomena that happen when you roll out this infrastructure. For example, you put in a new a railroad infrastructure that changes the traffic patterns with the cars. And it changes the traffic pattern with the cars. It might affect employment. Some new companies might set up uh, their factories at, at some different locations. So these are emergent phenomena. These are extremely difficult to study with pen and paper. Or just thinking about them and drawing conclusions, our intuition often leads us astray there. So having formal models being able to simulate it is, is very useful. Uh, they basically simulated all the 1.6 million residents of Portland with a real socio-democratic profile. So they said, well, what time do you go to work? Then usually when you arrive to work, when do you go to lunch, when you go home? And simulated 180,000 specific locations really creating a miniature version of Portland you could then play with and optimize this light rail infrastructure rollout. Summing up, we said that modern computational social science is built on the digitalization of both legs of science, the big data empirical aspect and the theoretical computer simulations. We said there are different, several characteristics to the big data paradigm, the digital footprint, uh, less of a need of sampling, data fusion, real-time data analysis, and the importance of machine learning. And now computer simulations also have several characteristics. For example, this what-if logic that is inherent to algorithms, what if, what if, that's how algorithms work, allows us to explore unprecedented scenarios that never existed in empirical reality. It allows for a visualization of unbiased reasoning. So formal model always help us to go further, to go where intuition would fail and to have an unbiased reasoning. It allows us to visualize this and stick to our assumptions. Um, it allows for an intuitive way to communicate our scientific results. So no need for knowing differential equations. is It's as intuitive as watching a video game unfold. And last but not least, the modularity of code allows for scalable solution to adjust for context dependence particular dependent particularities. So we can reuse code, just copy paste and adjust our model to very specific local and particular conditions. And that's what's meant by, by that.